Hey guys, Travis here. Um, I realized that I didn't have this online quiz uh, uh, embedded on my YouTube videos because I was looking for it. And I said, you know what? It's about time I create a new a new uh, online quiz UH video anyway. So here I am. I'm creating a video. Uh, it's 1.30 in the morning on a Saturday, pandemic edition. Uh, but it's okay. it's all good. I mean, this is what I want to be doing at this time. Uh, I feel like I got plenty of energy left in me because uh, I took a nap earlier. Uh, so yeah, here we go, guys. Math life. Uh, I'm happy, and I'm hoping that you are happy as well. And uh, let's get going. <laughs> all right. Uh, so the very first question, it says, calculate the indefinite integral, and I have some something over something. And I know maybe you're thinking, oh, maybe I can do u sub, guys. There's no reason to do u sub here. I'm dividing by one term. Uh, so just break it up. Uh, you can go 3x cubed over x squared minus 6 over x squared. Put the dx like that on the side. Uh, yes, I know. Chavez doesn't have any parentheses. It doesn't need to. The dx indicates just like the end type of deal. The beginning and the end here. Uh, so here we go. Uh, three, two of those gets canceled. And then you can bring that x squared up if you want. Uh, so you have 3x minus 6x to the negative 2. And now we're ready to take the antiderivative. So 3x2 over 2. Uh, so the way you take an antiderivative of a polynomial, you add 1 to the exponent and divide by that number. Minus, and then let's see, 6x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1. And then plus c, because there are no limits on that integrand. And negative divided by a negative is a positive. So finally, 3 half x squared plus 6 over x plus c. So hopefully that was cool, guys. If I go, if I'm going a little too fast, uh, maybe you can pause it or slow it down. Uh, but yeah, hopefully everything's at, a, at an okay speed. Uh, I guess you could also make it go a little faster, right? Times 1.5 or times two if this is too easy for you. Uh, so again, you're just gonna rewrite it, guys. So I'm gonna write integral seven x to the half. If you already know what the antiderivative of that is, then go go ahead and go right into it. I'm gonna bring this up. So minus x to the negative half plus 5e e to the x dx. And this time they did put parentheses. No big deal. Put one, put not. Put one or, or not. No big deal. So here we go, guys. 7x to the... Notice I left a little gap here. 7x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. So it's going to be times 2 thirds. So in a little bit, I'm going to multiply that 7 by that 2 there. Minus, let's see, add 1 to that exponent there. So x to the half divided by half, so that's going to be a 2, because uh, half goes into 1 twice, or you can just take the reciprocal, right? Plus antiderivative of 5e to the x is just 5e to the x, and then I put a plus c, and it doesn't have any limits. Again, let's finish it. 7 times 2 is 14, 14 over 3, x to the 3 halves minus 2 square root of x plus 5e to the x plus c. Another one, guys. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Uh, question three, it says find f and then give me f prime. And f, uh, this is, I guess this is an initial value because they put an f of zero, but you can just call it, they give you some value. So because they give me some value, guys, I can find what f of, uh, uh, I can find the equation of f. So I'm going to do antiderivative of eight cosine x. Antiderivative of eight cosine x is, uh, by the way, this is uh, your f prime there, see? So antiderivative of f prime is f. So f of x is equal to 8 sine x plus c. And you can test it. The derivative of 8 sine x is 8 cosine x. So we're good. Uh, and now I'm going to plug in a 0 and equal it to 2. So 2 equals 8 sine 0 plus c. Sine 0 is 0, guys. So hopefully you guys remember that. So I know that c equals 2. So my function has to be 8 sine x plus 2. And maybe you're thinking, man, Chavez, you're being extra. I could have just immediately plugged it in. And you could if you know that uh, that sine of 0 is 0. So you could have done that, guys. All right. Uh, this one here. Uh, notice that this is pretty straightforward. Notice that there's no uh, x on the top, so you're not going to be doing u sub. And as soon as you see, you know, let's rewrite it in a way that you can see it easier. 4 integral 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. So hopefully this is ringing a bell or, or raising red flags. Remember that the derivative, so side note, remember that the derivative of arctan 
is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So hopefully you guys remember that. And you're looking at this, and it doesn't matter, 1 over x squared plus 1 or 1 over 1 plus x squared. So this must be, the antiderivative of that that I'm just circling here must be arctan. So it's just going to be 4 arctan of x plus c, because there's no limits. And we start looking for that, and there it is. All right, let's see. All right, this one here. Well, some of you, like a handful of you may be able, or who knows, maybe uh, a whole bunch of you can probably do it without U sub. Uh, I like to do U sub on this. If you can figure out a way to work backwards, and I guess let the answers give you some of the, uh, let the answer give you the answer, uh, which actually some of you, uh, I'm impressed, uh, can do that pretty pretty quickly too. Uh, so yeah, I, I do it with U substitution, guys. I'm, I wouldn't go that route. So I'm just going to say that U equals X squared plus 5. Now, why am I doing U sub in case you're asking? Like, how do, try this. How do I know when to do U sub and when to not do U sub? Well, I notice that I have an expression, a binomial down here that has an X squared on it. And I notice that in the top, I have a, a polynomial, I guess if you want to call it that, or a single term that just has 3X. It's just a linear term. When I take a derivative of a quadratic, I'm going to get a linear. So notice when I write du here, I get 2x dx. And now the next situation comes, but Chavez, that's not a 2. That's a 3. Well, it's a product. It's 3 times x. I can take that 3 out. It's just a constant. 3 integral x over x squared plus 5 squared dx. And now, since I want to I wanna, I wanna substitute du for 2x dx, I can put a 2 in there. So now I have 2x dx right there. See? So if I put a 2 there, i got to balance it out by putting a 2 on the outside. So now, 3 halves, integral, and then that 2x dx is just u, uh, it's just du, sorry. du over x squared plus 5 squared. Oh, I already said that that was a u, right? u is x squared plus 5. u squared. I'm going to rewrite it, guys, so it's easier to see. 3 halves, integral, 1 over u squared du. I'm going to bring that u squared up. So 3 halves, integral, u to the negative 2 du. I'm ready now, guys. So let's see. 3 halves times u to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 plus c. So let's rewrite this. So negative 3 halves. And then I guess I'm going to bring the u down, right? So put the u next to that 2 there. And then plus c. And then let's bring in back what u is. u is x squared plus 5. So negative 3 over 2x squared plus 5. Close it plus c. And then finally, negative 3, if you distribute the 2 there, 2x squared plus 10 plus c. And let's look for that. And there it is. Yeah. Let's keep going. I don't know why the, the print PDF is looking funky today. Uh, that should have been a fourth root here, guys. So let me rewrite your equation here. Integral 4x squared, it's a fourth root of x cubed plus 7. So maybe it looks funky because my laptop is acting weird, or who knows. All right, uh, so again, I see a 4x squared, I see an x cubed plus 7. And I'm going to write u equals x cubed plus 7 because I recognize that if I take a derivative, it's going to be a quadratic. So I'm going to write du is equal to 3x squared dx. And again, same deal as last time I put a 4 on the outside. Integral x squared fourth root of x cubed plus 7 dx. I'm going to go ahead and change my color here. I need a 3. So I put a 3. Put a 3 in the bottom. There it is. Everything has been balanced. So I am good to go. 4 thirds integral. That 3x squared dx is nothing more than du. And then the x cubed plus 7 is just u. So I'm going to rewrite this as u to the 1 fourth du. I'm ready. Here we go. 4 thirds. That's just that constant there. I leave some space. u. And then I'm going to add 1 to that. So that's going to be 5 fourths. And I divide by 5 fourths, which is the same thing as multiplying by 4 fifths. And then I'm going to write plus c. 4 times 4 is 16, 3 times 5 is 15, so 16 over 15, parenthesis, plug that what u is, u is x cubed plus 7, so I type, or I write, x cubed plus 7, close it, put the 5 fourths in there, 
and then I put plus C and then I start looking for that guys so 16 over 15 X cubed plus 7 to the 5 4 there it is all right let's keep going ooh this one all right so this one has a little algebraic trick it's not even that extreme again you notice that you have a linear in the in the top a linear uh, uh, equation 12 12 X plus 18 and on the bottom you notice you have a parabola and I'm gonna take a derivative and check it out so I'm gonna go u equals x squared plus 3 x minus 1 so du equals 2 x plus 3 Ooh, I have two terms if you want to put this in parentheses with a dx like that because side note side note remember what we're really doing we're taking the derivative of u with respect to x so du dx is 2 x plus 3 and then we're treating the du dx like a fraction here times dx times dx so du equals 2x plus 3 dx which actually okay now we're back guys which actually we actually have if you factor out a 6 on that look at that omg so let's rewrite it guys I'm gonna take this on the outside of this integral so I'm gonna write 6 here integral and I'm gonna write 2x plus 3 over square root of x squared plus 3x minus 1 with a dx on it. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, I'm sorry guys, I can't actually hear you. So if you said no, uh, click on rewind for like the last 20 seconds and see if uh, it makes sense again the second time around. And if it doesn't, uh, put something in the comments and I'll see if I can get to it as soon as possible. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'm gonna start doing substitution. So the 2x plus 3 du or dx is nothing more than du. So I'm going to write a 1 on the top and then the square root of u. And here's my du. It's the same thing as saying du over the square root of u. And now I can rewrite this, guys. 6 integral is u to the negative half du. And here we go. So I'm going to take my antiderivative. 6 and then I'm going to add half. Uh, add 1, sorry. So u to the half, I'm already saying my answer there. And I'm going to divide by a half, so it's going to be a 2 there. So there's my little dot times 2, then plus c. So rewritten, that is 12 square root of u plus c. And remember that u was this uh, expression here, this trinomial. Uh, so 12 square root of x squared plus 3x minus 1 plus c. And I look for that, and there it is. All right, guys, so this one is a definite integral. The a is a constant, and or we're, we're treating the a as a constant, and uh, we're integrating with respect to x, and I see that I have a linear term on the outside of the square root, and I have a, a quadratic term on the inside of the square root. So I'm going to do u substitution again. I'm just going to say that u is equal to a squared minus x squared. So du is equal to negative 2x dx. Uh, so what I do, again, you just put the 9 on the outside. So I'm going to write 9 integral. For now, it's still 0 to a, right? Because I haven't changed anything yet. x square root of a squared minus x squared with a dx on it. So what I need is a negative 2. So negative 2. And I balance it out by putting a negative 2 on the outside. So now we're ready. Let's see. Negative 9 halves integral. And I'm not going to put limits yet. Negative 2x dx is du. And a squared minus x squared is u. So square root of u du. Now remember, that's just u to the half. Okay, now let's see what our limits are. When when x is 0, a squared minus 0 squared, that is just a squared. So I'll put a squared. When x is a, a squared minus a squared is 0. So I'll put a 0 on the top. I already know what I want to do. I am going to flip my limits here. So I can turn it into a positive. So 9 half integral 0 to a squared u to the half du. That's a half there. It just came out funny. It just came out funny. And uh, so now I'm going to take an antiderivative of that, guys. So I'm going to write 9 halves. And then I leave some space. And then I'm going to write u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. So that's going to be 2 thirds. Uh, and then plus c. I see that the 2's cancel out, 3 goes into 9 3 times, so I have 3 uh, u to the 3 halves, oh, and there is no plus c, silly me, I, I kind of rhymed, 
There's no plus C because there's limits. So erase that guy. I guess he would have been out when I did my anti-derivative here. Uh, do not go back to the original limits. You have new limits here. Those are the limits you're going to use. Uh, both terms are going to have a 3. I guess it doesn't matter. I'm going to factor out that 3 here. And I'm just going to do, uh, let's see, a squared to the 3 halves minus 0 to the 3 halves. Okay. So whenever you have an exponent raised to an exponent, guys, you just multiply those two dudes. So a squared times a to the 3 halves, that's just a cubed. And you still have that 3 there. So you're going to have 3a cubed. Yay. <laughs> Alright, guys. Uh, I don't think you necessarily need u substitution on this one, but you can definitely use it. No one's going to stop you. So if you use u sub, you can say u equals 2x plus 2, du equals 2dx. I don't have a 2dx, put a 2 there, put a half on the outside. Uh, so now you do. So 1 half integral of cosine u du. And then the antiderivative of a cosine is just sine, right? So 1 half sine u plus c. And then plug back what u is. So 1 half sine 2x plus 2, close parenthesis, plus c. The most common mistake here, guys, is that you guys don't put a parenthesis and just write sine 2x plus 2. Uh, make sure that you put 2x plus 2 inside the parentheses because the argument is 2x plus 2. The argument is not 2x. So there it is. And then we look for that answer. Alright, uh, this one again, uh, you don't necessarily need u substitution, but it definitely helps uh, if, uh, you know, like no one's stopping you. There's a free country. We're in America. You can do whatever method you like. Uh, so if you don't want to do u sub, go ahead and just take the antiderivative immediately. Recognize that in the inside you have 5x plus 5. It's not 5. Uh, the derivative of 5x plus 5 is just 5. Put a dx on it. So 5, 1, 5 on the outside to balance it out. 1 fifth times 5 is 1, so I haven't changed anything. So here we go. Integral. I have a 1 fifth on the outside. Secant u tan u du. Hopefully the secant u tan u is ringing a bell. Antiderivative of secant u tan u is just secant y because the derivative of secant is secant x tan x. So I write one fifth secant u plus c. I remember what u is. u is uh, 5x plus 5. So secant of 5x plus 5 plus c. And then I look for that. Alright guys, uh, let's go to the next one. So on this one, it's definitely going to be u sub. And in case you're wondering what u is going to be, well, uh, you could make u sine x dx. But then when I take the derivative of a sine, you get cosine x dx. And you're going to be left with an extra cosine because I have two of them there. It's cosine squared. So it's cosine times cosine. So u is going to be cosine x because when I do the derivative, look at that, sine x dx, negative sine x dx. I don't have a negative sine x dx at the moment, guys, but I can put one in there. And if I put one in there, I put a negative on the outside. So now I do. I guess I could have written the negative in front of that. So if you don't like the way that looks, I can just go do, do negative. So there's my negative there. That's my negative. So here we go. Rewriting it, guys. Negative on the outside. Integral. Remember that u is cosine and du is negative sine x dx. So I'm just going to write u squared du. And now I'm ready. So negative, that negative is that one. Antiderivative of u squared is u cubed over 3. I put a plus c on it. I remember what u is. u is awesome. Uh, so not u is cosine. Uh, u are awesome too. Everyone's awesome, right? So YouTube people, uh, those, that one fan that I have from, uh, from uh, what was it again? Um, well, anyways, it doesn't matter. Let's just continue here. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel here and checking out this video. Uh, u is cosine x, so I'm just going to write cosine cubed x divided by 3 plus c. And I look for that, and there it is. It's just written a little, you know, they put the one-third in the, in the front. No big deal. Alright, I like these type of problems here, guys. I see that the exponent is a 4x squared, and I notice that in the, in the front I have a, a product, and it's x times that. So immediately you can just do u sub. Uh, so I'm going to say that u is 4x squared, and then du is going to be 8x dx. So again, you don't have an 8 in there, so you're going to put an 8. And then you put a 1 8 on the outside to balance things out. 
So I got everything balanced, so one eighth integral. The 8x dx is du, but put it in the very end, please, because that's how you signify the end of this integrand. e to the u du. And you're done. Antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u, so one eighth e to the u plus c. Plug in what u is. One eighth e to the four x squared plus c. And we start looking for that. Awesome, guys. Let's keep going. This one here, it can be hard, but what you got to notice is that the answer choices are all inverse. And as soon as you see that, uh, they're all inverse trig. So as soon as you see that, I see a square root symbol. There's no way it could be arctan. Remember that the antiderivative of arctan has to look like 1 over 1 plus x squared or u squared. So there's no way it could be arctan. So delete those two. Those are the obvious worst ones. So now all you got left is arc sine. So it's going to be obviously be an arc sine one. In case you don't remember, side note, the derivative of arc sine, I'm going to write arc sine next there, is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Uh, if they write it arc sine of u, it's 1 over 1 minus u squared times du dx. No big deal. So I'm going to rewrite this integrand, guys. Integral e to the x over one, uh, square root of 1 minus, and I want to have something squared there. So I'm going to write, let's see, 2 e to the x being squared like that dx. And now if I square it, 2 times 2 is 4, and e to the x raised to the 2 is e to the 2x. So I'm good. So I'm going to set that u is going to equal 2 to e to the x there. So then du is going to be 2 e to the x dx. I don't have a 2, so I'm going to insert a 2. So when I do that, I put a half on the outside. And here we go, guys. 1 half integral 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared du. And now it just becomes just antiderivative, straightforward. 1 half, antiderivative of 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared, that's just arc sine. So 1 half arc sine of u plus c. And then I just insert back what u is. 1 half arc sine of 2e to the x plus c. And then I look for that, and there it is. Alright guys, so it up with a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, if uh, you thought this was informative. I guess you can give it a thumbs down if you'd like, but I, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And uh, that's it guys, I'll talk to you guys later, and I hope we're, whatever calculus professor or teacher you have, I hope that you're doing awesome. Alright, talk to you guys later, bye.